But without further ado, I will introduce the next speakers. So uh, this will be a fireside chat facilitated by Gary Eusen, who you met earlier today. Uh, he is going to facilitate a discussion on how to buy technology uh, for business professionals. The delegates joining Gary uh, are for the discussion are Ian Larkins and Harry Johnson from Radius Law. Please welcome Ian, Harry, and Gary. Thank you. <laughs> Once again. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, so we've got another fascinating topic here. It's uh, how to buy technology for business professionals. Um, really, we're looking to kind of focus on general counsel and you know, legal ops teams, but they often report that buying specialist tools is a minefield for them. They have different business requirements than the rest of the company as a whole. Um, so we've got Ian Larkins, um, former general counsel of Mercedes uh -huh. and founder of Radius Law. And we also have Harry Johnston, who leads many of the Radius Law's tech innovations. Um, they're going to discuss some of the issues and how we overcome them. So first things first, I'd like to introduce yourself, Ian, and a little bit of background to Radius. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, thank you, Gary. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to come along and talk today. Mm -hmm. um, so just a little bit to introduce uh, ourselves. Uh, as Gary mentioned, I'm, uh, we're from Radius Law. Uh, Radius Law is a law firm we, we set up in, in 2013, so we're almost 10 years old now. Um, and I was a former in-house counsel for, for Mercedes-Benz um, in, in the UK. Um, Radius was really trying to be the firm that I always wanted to employ but didn't seem to exist. Um, and it, there's a, some real fundamental principles that we, we try to, to live by, and those are the things that, as I say, we were really looking for as a, an external law firm. Um, we have the strap line of Law Innovated, and that's really uh, at our heart, as you see that, saw that on the first, first slide. Um, but then we've also got sort of three sort of core principles uh, uh, beneath that, uh, and that's firstly to, to, to make the complex simple. Uh, we know that you know, the world is a compl complex place, uh, law is, is very complicated, uh, but what we try and do is, it's a, I guess the best analogy is like an iPhone, uh, there's loads of complex stuff behind an iPhone, but, uh, but the user interface is very simple, and that's how we try to, uh, deliver, um, to deliver our legal advice. Uh, we embrace technology, uh, so technology has been a, a core part of what, we, what we're about, um, and we try and always make sure that we deliver in sensible and certain costs. Those are three principles. So um, just um, actually just flicking on to um, the, the last slide before I come back to that one. Um, we, we, we work with Legito because we really felt that Legito supported those real principles. Um, it, it delivers on all those, or helps us deliver on all those things of um, making the complex simple, uh, and of course, embracing technology and delivering sensible uh, and certain costs. So we use Legito both internally uh, within our business to create uh, templates and precedents for ourselves. We uh, have got our engagement letter on it. Um, but then we also out. Uh, are providing it as a service to our clients and, and delivering for them their, their templates. So um, that's, uh, that's us. As I say, Harry's here with me as well. So I think uh, Gary's got a few more questions for us that we're going to go through. Um, uh, and, and Harry's really leading the, the, the Ligito uh, implementation. Yeah, excellent. So like going back to your time as you know, GC at uh, Mercedes, you know, what sort of challenges did you face as an in-house lawyer implementing new new technologies? Um, yeah, well, it was huge, uh, actually. Um, and I, I'm not, I, I can't say we had a lot of success. Of course, um, you know, that's going back to 2013. But um, I think it, it's worth touching upon some of the real tangible challenges that, that I, I faced. Uh, one was internal sign-offs. Um, you know, being part of a, a global corporate organization, uh, it was you know, there was a lot of sign-offs for any, any project. Um, the, the IT department particularly would want to do a sort of root and branch uh, analysis of the, uh, of the project. Um, 
we would have to compete with the sales department, and that's often where the project uh, really fell down, because as a legal department, we're a support department. We don't add profit to the bottom line, uh, or at least that's the perception of, of, the, of the senior management. So it's a real challenge to, to get yourself up to the sort of a, um, the top of the tree when it comes to, to budgetary spend. Uh, one of the things that we were expected to do before we implemented any new IT project uh, was to look all around the world within the business to see um, if there was uh, another yeah. application out there. Yeah. Uh, and by the time all that's done, um, I, I probably would have retired. So uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> Excellent. So, and you know, how did you kind of overcome the restriction of being in-house? Um, well, as I say, I, I, I can't claim any um, real successes on that, mm -hmm. um, but I think some, some of the uh, messages that have already been delivered today um, about you know, a good implementation of an IT project, um, because we, we did have a few successes, um, but perhaps I can talk more about some of the ways that we're helping our clients implement uh, IT and, and how we're helping them to, to find ways. Because there are a lot, of, um, a lot of blockers, as I said, there's a lot of internal sign-offs. If you've got to get um, the internal IT department, they've got some legitimate questions often uh, around sort of IT security, et cetera. Um, so I, I, I think sometimes you've just got to find a way around all that. Um, so one, I'd, maybe just a, in order, one I'd say make sure you understand what the uh, objective of a project is. Um, repurpose anything that we've talked, I think the previous presentations have, uh, have talked about that as well, if there's, if there's existing technology. Um, find the best solution, but don't spend too long on it. I think that, um, again, one of the challenges is that there's so many um, project products out there, um, so you've got to kind of just ultimately go for one mm -hmm. and, and just get on with it. Um, but then as say, sort of looking at ways around problems that you, challenges that you might face. Um, and that's really one of the reasons why you know, we chose um, Legito is because, you know, because it's a cloud-based application. Um, that means that we can immediately overcome a lot of the objections that uh, uh, an organization might have because there are um, immediate concerns normally with any IT uh, product is you know, the integration, the software that's got mm -hmm. to be loaded onto the system. So, so that's helpful. Uh, and also, um, I don't know, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but it's you know, when, when we deliver it, we can deliver it on, on an invoice as legal services, uh, and that can really help the legal department just get around some of the tricky issues that they're buying IT. Yeah. Well, luckily, it's not getting filmed, so nobody will know about okay. that. Okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that in house lawyers often aren't able to progress because of a lack of time. Um, what recommend recommendations do you have for that? I think um, it, it is a, a real difficult one because, yeah, we. we talk to in-house lawyers all the time and I, and I hear the same problems um, of, of you know, lack of time that, that I had as well because it's, it's very hard as in-house lawyers uh, to deliver on proactive projects because that, you know, the, the reactive stuff, the, the hitting a, a month-end deadline and a sales contract, that's going to have all the pressure and as much as you can see that, that beautiful proactive project that's going to save you so much time and, and, and do so much good, um, it, 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 you just can't get there. Um, so I think you've, you've, got to, um, you've got to make it a priority. You've, you've got to uh, get the, the, perhaps the, the, the chief executive to uh, mandate it. That uh, was one of the things that I, I, I did do. I, I made the chief executive put it in my own objectives uh, so that I could say, look, the chief executive has said that this is a priority, so it's got to be done. Um, and I think it's about also about making some tough decisions, about saying to the business, look, there's, there's going to be a time where we just can't provide the same support to you for you know, a number of months because we've got to do this proactive project and this is in the best interest uh, of everyone ultimately. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about, for me, I've, and you know, some of the presentations that we saw today, you know, uh, EGT and things like that, but you know, a well-crafted 
template with maybe you know restrictions up to a certain value or um, you know approval workflow. I mean, it could be a case of a lot of these things. Once that's built, doesn't need to come to the lawyer's door. You know, it can be all kind of solved because all the all the language is being approved and the sales guys know the deal. You know, and as long as it doesn't go over a certain value, then they can get the document themselves and send it out. And that can sometimes, you know, create a bit of breathing space. Um, but you have that window, you're going to decide what that limit's going to be and, and, and things like that. But it also helps putting it more on the, perhaps the sales director's um, uh, desk rather than the legal desk. If they say, no, you stick and use that for value deals over that. Anything above that value, then yeah, sure, come to me. But like we you know, with uh, sales, often everything happens at the end of a quarter or end of the year. So it, that sort of helps. And then that can even evolve and maybe a more complex template could be created for maybe some of these higher value deals as well. So yeah, yeah. And, and I think, um, I suppose one of your recommendations, and mm -hmm. it's kind of building on what you were saying just there about sort of building to a more complex uh, document is, is just starting with that simple thing. Often what we'll say to the clients that are taking it on will say, let's just deal with your non-disclosure agreement because that that's, mm -hmm. you know, everyone hates a non-disclosure agreement. Uh, uh, and, and so if we can automate that, see the value, uh, and then often what happens then is it then builds its own momentum. People say, oh, it can do, could it do this? Well, yeah, it could do actually. Yeah. And we can build the case. Yeah, let's see. I'll tell you what, I'll get your question for you, Harry. <laughs> so like who, like who should be involved in the in the buying decision? So, kind of with the experience we've had, so we've had a client recently, um, kind of following that, I would say at least someone senior, um, there was a risk where you, if senior, the seniors are kind of starting to delegate, then they can't really appreciate the value there. Um, it kind of gets pushed to the side and I think in order to appreciate it, should I say like you need to you need to see it firsthand. You need to be part of the walkthrough. Um, you need to kind of have the brief there, and as well as kind of being senior. If it is only going to be a senior person there, then I would say characteristics-wise, mm -hmm. I'd written down open-mindedness, analytical, and positive. Um, I think if you're going in with tunnel vision or a negative mindset, again, you're limiting yourself. If you're looking at Legator for a specific task or like it's narrow what you're looking for, mm -hmm. if you only go in looking at that, you can't appreciate what more it can offer. Um, I think when I've been part of a number of the briefings now for different clients and as we're sort of going through um, the session and like what is available, the features that are there, it inspires further thought each time. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. I think we, we had uh, a, I suppose a negative experience, didn't we, recently, where um, we we talked about the you know what we could deliver um, using Legito uh, to a, a senior director. He, he was quite you know, quite revved up about it. Uh, he then said, oh, actually, it's, I'm really seeing this in my uh, property department. Um, you should speak to my property manager. We'll set up a meeting. Uh, property manager, I'll be there. Um, excellent. Um, as often happens in, as a, as a busy person, he wasn't available to make it. And I think on, on your chart earlier, the property manager was in that, that laggard category. Mm. Um, so um, we, we, we've, not, we've not lost hope but we've got some more work to do to uh, find a way in with that. Yeah, <laughs> very good. So, Harry, um, you know, you've implemented hot dogs both for you know, within Radius and helping Radius clients. How have you found using the product? Um, <laughs> so I just remember there's a room full of people who use Legio here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I came, I joined Radius last July and it had already been implemented. I hadn't used something like it before. It was very new to me. And it was a case of I couldn't kind of learn from the ground up. I had to go in, in, in the middle. Yeah. And instead of learning the foundations and building my understanding, I had to effectively do it backwards and work out how documents, records had been created and why they were, why they are the way that they are. So there was a challenge to it. Um, 
the challenge was almost bigger because it wasn't from like the ground up. And then kind of compounded with that was the as fast as I was learning with Legito where you are, mm -hmm. there's lots of developments and features being released yeah. constantly. Like I joined the webinars, they're great, I really enjoy them. But each time I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm still trying to get used to that. Yeah. Like and it is, it's a constant challenge, but I think it's sort of like because it's interesting and like I'm passionate about it, that's what kind of keeps me going. Um, and if worse comes to worse, I kind of fall back on the training. Um, that's they are my kind of favorite ones are the courses. I can't remember the specific word that you use for them, mm -hmm. but um, they are my go to because it's basic. Yeah. So if ever I get like worked up in my head, I'll fall back on that and it sort of just enables me to shift gears and come back at it like with a fresh mind. And then you've got the academy as well. Yeah. And of course, like I use you and Gary, uh, you and Gary, I use you and Paul yeah. a lot. Like, and you guys are all always on hand and super sport, super supportive, yeah. and more than welcome to, more than happy to assist. Yeah, it, it is one of the challenges that maybe some that doesn't get kind of discussed is, you know, some days maybe sat down and started building, you know, all these kind of templates, and then for one reason or another they've maybe left the, you know, the company, and then something new comes in, and it's, it's quite daunting, you know, even picking up a new tool, but maybe picking up and you know something that somebody has already kind of started on as well. Yeah. So I mean that was really so we're kind of conscious of that. So that's why I was pretty insistent. You know, <laughs> you know, we said we will be like proactively contacting you to check you're getting on okay, because you know you, you're new to a business. You know, you're you're trying to you know prove yourself and things like that. But you know we don't need to th give you another problem yeah. to kind of deal with. So it's something that we've we've all been very very conscious with. So. Uh, yeah, that's really what we, we try and do, try and, try and go that extra mile because um, it'll, it'll help us out in the long run. Um, that was kind of one of the things I was going to say on that front. Um, right, I'll, probably, I'll probably leave that back because <laughs> I can go on for ages. Um, Ian, what, what advice would you give to other legal departments embarking on, on new technology? I think um, the key thing, and, and it's probably covering what's uh, been in some of the earlier sessions, but really about just... Uh, what's the problem that you're trying to solve, um, uh, and and then and then find a solution? Often, I think is is it's sometimes a little bit the wrong way around finding a product rather than actually mm -hmm. identifying what the the solution is. Uh, and then and then you know one I think you know secondly starting small uh, go go big, uh, but really just just get on with it um, because yeah you you can have that decision paralysis if you. Uh, so, uh, try and you know, rest too long on, on, on the decisions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I absolutely 100% agree with that. Um, and what about some sort of challenges you have maybe with like your, your integrations and things like that? I mean, quite often if there's some big system or something like that, I mean, how do you kind of overcome that type of challenge? Yeah, I mean, well, one of the, the, the uh, again, the reasons why we wanted to go with Legito was because of its, you know, it's, it's uh, APIs uh, into, um, into other systems because it's, it's going to be really critical for us as we continue on this journey that we can um, integrate with, mm -hmm. with our other applications and make our whole um, user, user journey easy. And that's, that's for all sorts of different reasons. And one of the key things actually is about, uh, you know, providing a, a, a systems that are easy to use for our staff. I mean, we, we often talk about um, you know, our clients and our customers, but actually, um, when you look at why staff leave companies, it's often because uh, you know, it's just too hard. You know, the, the systems don't integrate. Um, you need 26 different passwords uh, to get into a system, uh, and people are finding that they're not actually able to use their, their skills and do what they enjoy doing because the, it, the administration of the, particularly the IT systems are, uh, are are making their lives difficult and they just can't get to what they enjoy doing um, so so that that's something that's that's um, really important to us and, it, and it's it's been great and it's proven we although we're by no means perfect we have got some really good systems in in leap and and some of our staff have have, I've said you know, the reasons why they came to us was because of the systems that we've got uh, and because it, it makes their life easier. Mm -hmm. so that's really key. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's something I'm, I'm hearing as well is, uh, you know, the people, 
one that actually is coming up more and more with kind of interviewing people and things like that is they actually ask during the interview process like what what technology are you using and things like that because you know they, they want to be doing the job you know they, they want to be offering value and not getting caught up in the mundane type stuff and um, that's really where kind of automation can can really help and yeah. and you know for these companies that are absolutely swamped because that's the other one sometimes speak to some of these in-house counsel and like, some of them are of like working like 80 hours a week you know they're just like and they know that it's getting worse because there's bad documents getting sent out today because yeah. not managed to get that and i think the real value add with people like radius is you understand these guys problems you could go in there build a well-made template quite quite quickly and they could start getting some breathing space already and then they can maybe take it on themselves or sort of prove it out so we'll sort of see like that well and we're running out of time counters at zero um, so just really want to say many thanks for, for coming all the way out to Prague, Harry and, thanks and Ian. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, have a few beers on the boat later. Indeed. Thank <laughs> you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>